would like to get accomplished in the offseason? Well, I, I think the biggest thing we got to do is we got to go back over our current season just finished and, and make sure that we really sit down and evaluate it and, and make sure that we're ready when off-season conditioning starts, that we're addressing the issues that we need from a development standpoint, and then make sure we're ready whenever spring ball gets here, that we're able to really get to the nuts and bolts of fixing the problems that we had. What problems do you think you need to be fixed? Well, it goes without saying turnovers. When we took care of the football, we gave ourselves the opportunity to win football games. When we didn't take care of the ball, obviously it's hard to win. Are there areas of the offense that you'd like to improve? Well, you know, the, the second part obviously is we need to become where we're, we're truly a threat, both run game and passing game. And um, obviously there was too many games that we, we really didn't give ourselves an opportunity to throw the football down the field well enough. How do, you, how, how do you do that? I mean, Coach Show talked about how um, big of a uh, issue defenses would have if Chris becomes becomes Well, I, I think we've got to do a couple things there. We've got to put him in a comfort zone where he truly understands, hey, I'm, I'm going from A to B, or I know this is the defender that I'm reading, and, and that guy's then making the decision for me, meaning if the guy takes the flat away, then I'm throwing the curl. If the guy takes, stays in the curl, then I'm throwing the flat. Um, continuing getting him where he's comfortable with, with the decision factors that he has to make. How much progress can you make? Is it oh, I think he can make a ton of progress. I, you know, I, I truly believe fundamentally as far as his ability to throw the football physically, he's got good fundamentals and, and he's got a good release and he's got, he's got pretty good footwork for being an 18-year-old freshman. Um, the biggest thing that he's got to get to now is, is, okay, I'm a run threat, I'm a guy that's getting hit, I'm a guy that's maybe tired at times, am I able to sit back and process um, okay, now we've just called a pass play. Am I able to process what's going on? Um, you know, one of the things I, I think that happens to a, a quarterback that's a run threat is he needs to play hard every single snap. That being said, then your adrenaline, your your ability to okay, now calm back down, relax, think about what my options are from a passing game standpoint, isn't always as easy as it should be. And part of it's because he's not dropping back, handing off. He's handing off or faking a handoff and then needs to carry out a fake so he's always moving. He's, he's never in that settled down state where okay I see a play come in, all right my adrenaline is, is back in check, um, I'm able to really process everything and as he gets older and gets more used to it, I, he'll, he'll do a better job with that. Can you talk about that fourth down play call there at the end of the game? You know, uh, and I know Coach Choke talked a little bit about it. Um, it it's, it's something that we have. We, we've been practicing it since week one, had it in Idaho. You know, we talked numerous times how we wish we had the fourth down in Idaho back and would have run that exact same play. Um, this week, my biggest thing was we've run on short yardage a lot where we've gone what we call 22 personnel, motion Barth across, and run power. And, and so we felt like we'd set it up, not so much during that game, but it set it up over the last few weeks as far as what our short yardage stuff had been. So as long as we felt like it was a, what I'd call a flat box, everybody basically all 10 or 11 guys really up in there and not a true free safety standing back there, we felt like we had a, a fighting chance to have it be successful. Chris nearly stumbled coming out from center. Um, you know, and, and Coach talked about that it's a, a part of the play. And, and a little bit that was in jest, but it actually is, we want him to, to, to act as though he's actually fumbled it, to put it on the ground. The problem was we didn't really want the right guard to step on his right foot when he's trying to get out from under center. So uh, it ended up working out almost identically to the way that we wanted executed. And then obviously he's got to snap his head around and find his guy. And, and, and in that setting, you want him to throw it kind of no matter what, because the sack kills you where the interception or a, a, uh, an incompletion still leaves the ball where, where originally line of scrimmage was. So, so obviously you don't want to lose yards on it. Uh, a no gain or a big play is obviously the two best options. Coach said Chris was a little hesitant when you guys made that call. Yeah, you know, I, th I, I on the, was sitting there at a timeout and you, you have everybody kind of putting their two cents in a little bit. And you know, often you're going to say, "Hey, what do you think about it from the quarterback standpoint?" And you know, it's not something that we've obviously done uh, in a game setting. So, you know, he was a little apprehensive, but but you know, coach basically said, "Hey, that's what you think." And I said, "Yeah, let's roll it." And, and you know, he's 
Chris will make the play, and, and he did. I mean, you know, that, that's, I think, one of the things that, that you, you, you want their input, but you also want, to, want them to understand, hey, man, have confidence, just believe in it. We're, this, we're calling it for a good reason, and we would have taken a timeout if, the, if it didn't look like it was the right set. How do you feel about your group of running backs going forward with the graduation of Gunner and Chad? Well, a couple of things on that. Obviously, the, the, the biggest thing that I feel like we're going to lose with those two guys graduating is their leadership and their toughness and their, their right for brand uh, mentality. Um, you know, when, when you look at uh, Chad, I don't know exactly. I'd say his longest run of the year is somewhere around 30 yards, yet he averages almost five yards a carry. So he's a workman. He's, he gets everything out of what he's got, and, and he slides off contact and goes and gets three more yards so many times. We're going to really miss that ability to know that when you hand it to him, you're going to get positive yards. Um, on the other side of it, you say, okay, now there's, there's Gunner, who averaged, I don't know, somewhere close to six yards per carry um, with a 60 yard or a, a 55 yard or a 65 whatever it was yesterday or, or Saturday already um, but you know so you're going to miss some of those quick hitter bang plays um, the positive is Nick Lassane started to come along the last half of the year and show that when you do hand to him you got a chance for him to have big big explosive plays um, Logan um, if we can keep him healthy he's not a big hammer guy by any means but you know, you go all the way back to the Sac State and say he's got some ball skills. He's got some quick twitch. He can catch the ball out in, the, uh, out in space and, and do something with it. Um, obviously, recruiting that's going to be a priority. That we make sure we, we we bring in a guy that can carry the football and, and can be successful for us. Um, often the run game really is driven by your old line. Um, going to really hurt losing JP. Um, obviously, a great leader, also a senior that's started what 40 some odd games in a row. Um, but we also got four guys coming back that now have played a bunch of football as a group and, and played pretty darn well as a cohesive group. Um, and that will really determine how good the running backs are is, is those guys staying healthy, those guys continuing to improve. You know, uh, from the tackle standpoint, both Mitch and Dylan did a, did a tremendous job and, and I think we'll continue to get better. What does your next couple months look like before signing day? Will you be on the road recruiting a lot or mostly here? Um, it'll be a little bit both, meaning that, that obviously there's some young men that are committed um, that we need to get out and see, and I'll try to get out and see, especially offensive guys, quarterbacks, and, and, and any offensive, offensive guys in general. Um, and then we'll also be really going back through, like I said, and evaluating what we've done. You know, the two things in my mind are you have to always go out and recruit great players that are the quality kids that have the right character and can make plays for you, but then you have to really make sure you concentrate on developing the, the young men that are in your program, and that will be a huge part of this offseason is the continued development. What do uh, two wins like this at the end of the season do from a momentum standpoint? Well, from the offseason standpoint, it's, it, it catapults you into a, a, a situation where, hey, I can't wait to get back to the weight room. I can't wait to get back and get going. That week that they, they have off, uh, you know, this kind of Thanksgiving break, when, when they get back on that Monday and Tuesday, I think that your mindset will be good. Let's get back in the weight room. Let's get back going. Let's get back rolling. I've had plenty of downtime. Um, sometimes if you don't have that, that win or two right before it, it's like, ooh, back to the grind. So I think the mentality will be, no, let's get back and we'll get better. So. All right. Awesome. Thanks,